Tesla's $20,000 Model 2 is no longer a rumor. It's rolling off Giga Texas production lines right now, built in just 4.5 seconds per car using revolutionary Giga Press technology. But here's the shock. To hit that price, Tesla stripped out heated seats, premium sound, even the panoramic roof. What you're getting is fabric seats, single pane windows, and an interior that looks nothing like the Model Y. So why would anyone buy this? Because Tesla kept the one thing that matters most, full self-driving hardware and a 300 mile range from a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack. Let's talk about what's actually happening inside Giga Texas right now. Traditional automakers build a car's rear chassis from roughly 70 separate metal parts, each stamped, welded, inspected, then assembled by hundreds of robots over several minutes. Tesla looked at that process and asked one question. Why not cast the entire thing in one shot? The answer is the Giga Press, a 9,000-ton monster delivering 50,000 tons of clamping force, powerful enough to form the entire rear underbody in exactly three seconds. Molten aluminum pours into the mold, gets pressed, extracted by robotic arms, cooled in a 50-degree Celsius water bath, and drops straight onto the assembly line. No downtime, no wasted steps. For the Model Y, Tesla's 6,000-ton press replaced 70 parts and cut costs by 40%. But the Model 2 takes this further. The next-generation Giga Press casts five complete chassis units in one cycle. Traditional methods take several minutes per chassis. The Giga Press does it in seconds, enabling Tesla's goal of one vehicle every 33 seconds. Do the math. In a 24-7 operation, that's potentially 2,600 cars per day from a single line. But here's the controversial part. By eliminating 400 welds and 450 robots from the production line, Tesla also needs far fewer human workers. They're not just building cars faster. They're building a factory that barely needs people. Is this the future of manufacturing, or is Tesla creating an employment crisis while chasing profit margins? To hit $20,000, Tesla made brutal choices. No heated seats, no premium sound, no panoramic roof, no synthetic leather, just fabric, no acoustic glass. The interior looks nothing like the Model Y's plush cabin. This has people questioning whether Tesla is damaging its premium brand by releasing what looks like a budget Econo box. But here's what they kept. Full self-driving hardware. Every camera, every sensor, the entire FSD computer stack. Why include expensive autonomous tech while cutting heated seats? Because the Model 2 isn't designed as a car you own for 10 years. It's designed to become a robo-taxi. Think about the business model. Tesla isn't selling you luxury. They're flooding the market with FSD-capable vehicles for autonomous ride-sharing. The stripped interior makes sense when robo-taxi passengers don't care about heated seats. Fabric is easier to clean. Simplified design reduces maintenance. Single-pane windows cut replacement costs. Tesla claims 300 miles from a 50-kilowatt-hour battery, roughly 6 miles per kilowatt-hour, significantly better than Model 3 efficiency. That's possible through lightweight casting, optimized aerodynamics, and next-gen battery chemistry. But can they deliver those numbers in real-world winter highway driving? Or is this another optimistic estimate? BYD just announced their Seagull model selling under $10,000 in China. Tesla celebrates $20,000, while Chinese competitors go half that price. So why isn't Musk panicking? Because Tesla isn't competing on price alone. They're competing on production scale. BYD might build cheaper cars, but they can't match Tesla's 4.5-second cycle. When you produce twice as many vehicles with half the labor costs, you undercut competitors even with higher material costs. Tesla is positioning Model 2 as their volume leader. Estimated production double the Model Y. At 50,000 units weekly from Giga Texas alone, that's 2.6 million yearly from one factory. Add Shanghai and Berlin once retooled, and Model 2 production could hit 5 million annually. Ford sold 1.9 million total vehicles in 2023. GM sold 2.6 million. If Tesla hits 5 million Model 2s alone while producing Model 3, Y, Cybertruck, and Semi, they're not competing with EV makers anymore. 
They're challenging Toyota and Volkswagen for global dominance. Shanghai could manufacture Model 2 with localized supply chains at costs even lower than $20,000. Imagine Tesla selling for $15,000 in China with superior range and FSD, while BYD stays at $10,000. That's realistic by 2026. Why build the cheapest car with the most expensive sensors? Why strip comfort but keep autonomous hardware? Why target 5 million units yearly? Because Tesla isn't building for private ownership. They're building their RoboTaxi Network Foundation. A Model 2 RoboTaxi operating 16 hours daily could complete 40 to 50 rides at $2,000 monthly revenue, $500 operating costs, generating $1,500 profit per vehicle monthly. Own 1,000 RoboTaxis. That's $1.5 million monthly. Scale to 100,000 vehicles. That's $150 million monthly profit. But here's the twist. Tesla doesn't need to own these vehicles. They sell Model 2s at $20,000, take 30% of autonomous ride revenue through their platform, and collect passive income from millions of vehicles without capital expense. They own manufacturing, autonomous software, charging infrastructure, and the ride-sharing platform. Complete vertical integration. Critics say full autonomy is years away, and they're right to be skeptical. Tesla's promised FSD next year for a decade. But here's what's different. By the time regulators approve level four autonomy around 2026 to 2028, Tesla will have hundreds of thousands of FSD capable Model 2s already on roads, ready to activate through software updates. Every other automaker waits for regulatory approval before investing in autonomous fleets. Tesla manufactures the fleet now, sells them as regular cars and flips the switch when regulations allow. If you're Waymo spending $10 billion developing $150,000 autonomous vehicles, how do you compete against $20,000 Teslas already mass-produced? Tesla's entire strategy hinges on one assumption, manufacturing reliable vehicles in 4.5 seconds without sacrificing quality. And Tesla's track record is inconsistent. Early Model 3 had panel gaps and assembly issues. Cybertruck launched with misaligned panels and rusting steel. When producing every 4.5 seconds, what happens to quality inspection? Traditional lines have multiple checkpoints with human inspectors. Tesla's hyper-automated line moves so fast people can't keep up. Musk said people can't even get close to it. So who checks for defects? Cameras and AI, presumably. But computer vision misses hairline cracks and castings, subtle electrical failures, paint contamination. If Tesla ships Model 2s with structural casting defects appearing at 50,000 miles, they face recalls dwarfing automotive history. Imagine recalling 2 million vehicles because the Gigapress had an undetected mold defect for six months. Another risk, aluminum castings are strong but difficult to repair. Traditional stamped steel might need panel replacement after collisions. Single-piece castings could total the vehicle from moderate damage because they can't be economically repaired. Insurance companies already inflate Tesla repair costs. What happens to Model 2 premiums when the entire chassis is one unrepairable piece? Tesla isn't just building a cheap EV. They're executing a strategy reshaping global transportation economics. The Model 2 is simultaneously a mass market vehicle, future robo-taxi platform, and manufacturing showcase proving Tesla builds faster and cheaper than any automaker in history. Whether they deliver without compromising safety remains uncertain, but traditional automakers just ran out of time. By the time Ford or GM develop comparable Gigapress technology, Tesla will have produced millions of Model 2s and captured the affordable EV market. The question isn't whether Model 2 succeeds, it's whether the automotive industry survives what comes next. So here's exactly why legacy automakers are sweating. The Model 2 isn't just a cheaper Tesla, it's proof that American manufacturing can still outpace the world when you're willing to completely redesign the game. That 4.5 second production cycle, the Giga Press technology, the Robo Taxi Ready platform. This is Tesla answering the question we asked at the start. Yes, they can pull off mass production at unprecedented speed, but the real question is whether they can maintain quality at that scale. And that's what makes 2025 the inflection point. If Tesla delivers Model 2s without major defects, 
they've just obsoleted a century of automotive manufacturing wisdom. If the aluminum castings crack or the simplified interiors fall apart, we're watching the limits of hyper-automation in real time. But here's what's coming next that nobody's prepared for. Once Model 2 production stabilizes at Giga Texas, Shanghai and Berlin will follow with localized versions. We're talking 5 million units annually by 2027, more than Ford's entire lineup. And the moment regulators greenlight level 4 autonomy, every one of those vehicles becomes a potential robo-taxi with a software update. That's not speculation. That's Tesla's actual roadmap. The automotive industry just entered a new era where the winner isn't determined by who builds the best car, but who builds the most cars, the fastest with the lowest cost structure and the best software integration. Toyota dominated through lean manufacturing. Tesla's dominating through vertical integration and ruthless automation. So what do you think happens when 2 million Model 2s hit American roads in 2026? Does this force GM and Ford to finally abandon combustion engines entirely? Or do they double down on hybrids and hope Tesla stumbles? Drop your take in the comments. This is Tesla Zone, where we break down the engineering and business strategies reshaping transportation. If you want more deep dives into what's actually happening behind the headlines, you know where to find us. The Model 2 isn't the end of Tesla's disruption. It's the beginning of the autonomous era, and we're all just witnessing the first move. A humanoid robot just cracked eggs, cooked bacon, and plated breakfast in a real kitchen. No teleoperation, no human backup. This is Optimus Gen 3, and Elon Musk claims it can now perform 3,000 tasks daily, from cooking meals to doing laundry and caring for the elderly. That's nearly double Gen 2's capability. But here's the real question. If Tesla can mass produce this at 20,000 to $25,000 by late 2025, what happens when millions of households can afford a robot that works 24 seven? Is this the breakthrough that finally makes human labor optional? Or are we watching another overpromised Tesla timeline? Let's break down what Musk actually revealed and whether Gen 3 can deliver on these bold claims. First, let's clear up the confusion that's been flooding social media. Those striking yellow and black Tesla bot images you've seen recently? They're not Gen 3. Elon Musk himself confirmed this. Those are Gen 2 and 2.5 units being teleoperated for testing purposes. This distinction matters enormously because Gen 3, scheduled to launch in February 2025, represents a fundamental leap forward, full autonomy. While Generation 2 still relied on remote human control and famously stumbled during demonstrations, Generation 3 is engineered to operate independently in the real world. So if what we've seen so far is just the warm-up act, what exactly is Gen 3 bringing to the table? Here's where things get interesting. Musk claims Optimus Gen 3 can cook breakfast daily, functioning as a genuine household assistant. That might sound like marketing hype, but there's a strategic reason Tesla chose cooking as the flagship demonstration. Consider what's actually involved. The robot must open a refrigerator without damaging it, identify and sort ingredients, lift eggs with enough precision to avoid cracking them, turn on a stove, control a pan's temperature, Crack eggs cleanly, add oil, stir evenly, and time every step perfectly. Each action demands a fusion of dexterous hands, sharp perception, and seamless real-time coordination. Industrial robotic arms can weld car frames with near-perfect precision, but put them in a kitchen and they're completely useless. Why? Because factories offer standardized, repetitive, predictable environments. Kitchens are chaos. What's remarkable is that Optimus Gen 3 can now use a frying pan, crack eggs, cook them properly, and remove them at exactly the right moment. To reach this capability, Musk says the engineering team trained Optimus relentlessly, pushing the robot to what he calls true mastery, where errors are nearly eliminated. This expanded Gen 3's skill set from a few hundred actions to approximately 3,000 tasks. 